Hey folks, this is my 2018 Honda Accord and because it's a 2018, it's the 10th generation and has the electric um, parking brake in the rear. And so when you go to do the brakes, you might wonder how do I turn in, um, retract that piston on the rear brakes. And the reason I wanted to put this out there is that there seems to be a lot of different information out on the internet about this. Some people say you need the factory scan tool uh, some people suggest uh, applying 12 volts onto the um, connector to the motor and retract in the screw internally in that fashion. And you can certainly do it that way. Some people recommend taking off the back cap of the motor and um, spinning the screw in. There's a shaft that comes out and spinning that in uh, manually to retract the screw. Uh, but there's actually a far simpler way I wanted to share that with you and demonstrate that. And that is simply to use the um, standard uh, piston turn back tool that we used on all the previous generation Honda Accords. So if you're interested, I'll give you a demonstration of doing that as well as uh, showing you some of the other ways you can retract the piston in if you prefer. And finally, in the end, I'll tear this uh a caliper down and show you what's inside so if you are interested in that stay tuned for that so just to give you a little bit of an idea of how these um, brake calipers work here's a tear down image from Honda and you've got the motor on the side with a worm drive that then goes into a second worm drive to increase the torque and that drives this screw mechanism that comes down into the middle of the piston and there's this uh, nut that's driven by that screw mechanism. So when you put the electric parking brake on, it drives that nut out, which presses against the piston, and that pushes against the brake pads, which uh, puts the parking brake on. And then when you retract the parking brake, it turns the screw in the other direction, pulls that nut back, and releases the parking brake. But the piston just sits on top of that nut, and it's free to travel further. And so when you apply the brakes hydraulically in normal operation, the piston just uh, separates from the nut and pushes out against the pads for normal brake operation. So now when you want to um, turn the piston back in, in this case, the piston is actually keyed to that inner nut. So as you turn the piston in, then it's turning that nut as well and screwing it back on this shaft. Uh, but as you'll see, a lot of times once you finish turning it in, the piston sits out um, still a little bit because it's not connected directly to the nut. And so you have to just uh, push it in the rest of the way. But you can see how if you wanted to, running the motor also would retract that nut um, as well as turn, taking off this back case and turning the shaft of this screw by hand. All right, so I've got the uh, caliper pulled off the vehicle and I disconnected the electrical cable. It's not necessary. I just did it to provide a little more room and I removed the uh, caliper bracket just to give us a little more room. But now I'll show you how the piston, which you can see is out um, quite a bit. It's extended quite a bit due to the pad wear. Um, as the pads wear, the piston has to come out further and further to make up the difference in the worn um, pad thickness. So I'll show you how you can wind back the piston uh, just like we did on previous generation Accords and lots of other vehicles with a manual parking brake. Basically just rotating that piston back to um, turn that the nut and the nut will then retract on the screw. Um, so I'll be using one of these um, turn back tools. Uh, they're available usually on eBay and Amazon for $25 or $30. They come up with, with a bunch of different um, adapters for different um, style pistons. And you just find one where the pegs on the adapter line up with the slots in your piston. That usually just mounts on there magnetically. Then you insert the tool, line up the pegs with the slots in your piston, and then you unscrew this nut. And the idea here is that you just want to unscrew it to keep tension on the tool so that as you're rotating, it keeps the uh, tool inserted in those slots so it doesn't pop out on you. And then it's just a matter of rotating clockwise to turn that piston back in.
as we're doing this we have to uh, as the piston goes back in we have to keep a little bit of tension on that nut so again as we're doing this the piston is key to that inner nut and the inner nut is turning back on that screw and retracting All right, and then we get to the point where it won't turn anymore. And this is the point at which that nut has been retracted as far as it can go on the screw. But you can see, still see that the uh, piston is still sticking out quite a bit. And that's because the piston floats on top of the nut and is pushed out by the brake force. So now we just need to go in there and just push it back. And we could use this tool to do that, just inserting it and unscrewing the nut to force it back in. Or if you have another kind of piston pushback tool, um, you could use that. I like to use this style tool, which is um, kind of like a big caulk gun. And just put that in there and the piston should push back in pretty easily. And um, when it's pushed all the way back in, it's about flush with the top of the dust boot here. As an aside, I like using this kind of tool just because it gives good tactile feedback so you know how hard you're pushing the piston back in. I've had a few times where the piston, maybe because of the dust boot had a hole in it or something, but the piston on the outside has developed some deposits, some rust or something, and it makes it hard to push it back in. But if you're using some kind of a threaded pusher, maybe something like this style, then you can assert so much force to push it back in, you might not notice that there's a lot of um, resistance. And if there is a bunch of junk built up on the outside of the piston, then sometimes when it comes out, uh, you know, when the new brake pads that you put in wear, then it can get caught up on that square cut seal and cause your brakes to stick. Um, so anyway, this tool provides a little bit of more feedback to just give you confidence that the piston's going back nice and easy. So the main point there was just that um, you don't need to do anything fancy if you don't want to. You can just turn back the piston on these vehicles the same way we did with the manual park and brake vehicles. All right, so I put the caliper back on and um, put the emergency brake on and pumped the brake a few times to get the piston back out. And now I'll show you another method using the scan tool to retract it in or not. And obviously for that, we have to hook the electrical connector back up. So if you do have a scan tool that has uh, the ability to do Honda hot functions, um, like this is an Autel um, MS906, then you can go in and um, into electric parking brake, then brake pad maintenance mode, and then enter brake pad maintenance mode. Oops, and then hit OK. And then when you hit OK here, um, that will turn the motors to wind back the inner uh, nut on that screw. So um, I'll set you up in the back so you can see the caliper uh, while I do this, since it's not easy for me to get them both on camera at the same time. OK, so I've got you set up so you can see the rear caliper and now I'm going to hit go on the scan tool. Okay, so now the um, inner nut has been completely retracted. Uh, I think a lot of people are surprised to not see the piston pull back in when they do that. Uh, and of course, the reason for that is that the nut is retracted, but the piston still sits out there because it just rides on top of the nut and it's held out by the square cut seal. So now we still have to go in and then just press the piston back in. But since we wound back that nut using the scan tool, we no longer have to wind it back in. We can just press it back in. All right, so I just disconnected the electrical connector and moved the caliper down a little bit where it's easier for me to access but not hit the camera. And now since that uh, inner nut is retracted with the, it, with the scan tool, I should be able to just go back in and 
press the outer piston indirectly. So that's method number two. Uh, you run the motor using the scan tool to retract that in or not, but then you still have to come in here and just um, push the piston back in. So another option, and you see this a lot of times on YouTube, uh, to retract that in or not, is to apply 12 volts to the terminals of the motor yourself um, and then run the motor to drive that nut back in. And that's certainly another option. There's just two electrical terminals um, in the plug, and you can just hook those up to 12 volts. In this case, I'm using a benchtop power supply that's current limited. Um, if you are doing this directly off the battery, um, then you definitely want to put some kind of an inline fuse like this or something. You don't want to hook it directly to the battery for safety reasons. And also, uh, you know, if you short it out, you could bugger up the connectors in there and make it useless. So you also have to get the polarity right. So I'll start off here with the wrong polarity and show you what happens. So the current goes up to about 0.65 amps to drive the motor and then you see that the piston actually goes out. So if the piston's going out then you've got the wrong polarity and you need the reverse polarity to drive the nut back in. Um, or you could just look here and see that the uh, correct polarity to draw the nut back in is to have the positive terminal um, closest to the motor. So if you put the um, plus 12 volts on the terminal closest to the motor and the ground on the opposite terminal, then it will drive the nut in. So let's do that. So the nut's being retracted right now. It's taking 0.67 amps or so. When it goes all the way back in, you'll see the current jump up to a lot higher current. So it jumps up to about two and a half amps or so. Um, and that means that that nut is all the way retracted in there. And as we saw before, uh, the piston's not retracted because the piston rides on top of that nut. Um, and so it just usually sits out where it is. But now we can go in there and just push it back in. So that's, I guess, option number three is apply 12 volts to the terminals. If you do so, just don't hook it directly to the battery with your jumper cables or something or alligator clips because um, if you do have a short, that would be bad. So you want to put some kind of current limit in like an inline fuse or something for safety. So another way to wind back the inner nut um, inside the piston on these calipers with the electric parking brake is to take off the whole motor assembly and turn the shaft back by hand. Um, there's just two, um, sorry, loosen these up, but there's just two Allen screws. I think they're, uh, yeah, five millimeter on the back of the motor housing that hold it in place. So we can take those out. And then once you get the two screws out, the whole motor assembly can come off. And then you see the shaft in the back that drives the um, inner nut in and out. And it turns out that if you have an external Torx, let's see, 12 millimeter socket, it kind of fits on there. It's not perfect, but it does lock in place. Um, and then you simply have to turn that. Uh, shaft um, and let's see what the direction is so it looks like counterclockwise yeah counterclockwise pushes the piston out so to retract it looking at the back you want to turn it in a clockwise fashion it does seem to turn pretty easily so that stopped so I assume that means the nuts all the way back in so if that's the case, we should be able to just press the piston back in at this point. Simple enough. Now this isn't really my preferred method of doing it just because um, 
Yeah, I guess you could damage the O-ring. Probably not a big deal, but you're wiping the grease off the shaft and stuff. But it works fine. It's another good option, I think, if you wanted to do it this way. Didn't, Or maybe if you didn't have the wind back tool. Okay, so if you're one of the two people still watching, you either really like brake calipers or you're having a slow day. But in either case, you're lucky because now I'll take this old caliper apart and we'll get to see what's inside. Uh, so we can pop off the dust boot. I already had this off, so it comes off pretty easy, a lot easier than it would if you're doing it on an old caliper. Uh, so now to take out the piston, I think the easiest thing to do is to just drive the motor and force it out because it's held pretty tightly um, by that square cut seal around the circumference of it. So applying 12 volts to it. If we can get good contact on the terminals there. Alright, so it looks like that's free to come out now. So maybe I have to wind this nut back a little bit. So this is the outer piston, and you can see the um, little piece of metal that sticks out that keys it to the inner nut. And this is the um, inner nut. That's got the flat spot for key in. So this is why when you turn the piston, it turns the inner nut. And then this inner nut is attached to that inner screw mechanism. And then, of course, then in there, hopefully you can see the uh, square cut rubber seal that goes around the outside to seal it. Um, now, I will say I've already had this apart, as I said. And... This is actually not as quite as simple as just a threaded rod. It's actually what's called a ball screw mechanism. And the threads are actually made up by um, little ball bearings. So you can see them all here um, that fell out when I took that inner nut off. Uh, so that gives even lower friction and lower force rotating um, the piston as the screw is driven out. Um, but I will say if you like to rebuild your calipers, as I do occasionally, um, you don't want to take this um, inner nut off in the process because uh, if you do, then all the uh, ball bearings come out and I'm not really sure how you'd put them back in. So, um, so if you're doing a caliper rebuild uh, on this style caliper, really all there is to it, you can take off the outer piston and replace the dust boot obviously and you can replace that square cut seal uh, clean the piston but um, you definitely don't want to take off that uh, inner nut anyway that's all I've got um, hope you enjoyed this and learned from it my main reason for making this video was just that I think some folks get discouraged um, from doing their own brakes on these Honda Accords with electric parking brake and just want to show that there's lots of uh, simple ways to retract the piston and um, probably the easiest the one I usually use is just using that wind back tool again um, just because it's so quick and easy to do